Max Intel Show is brought to you in part by the South Florida Water Management District. Welcome to another very exciting edition of the Maxine Teller Show. We have a very, very special guest, and I mean very special. This is historical, and I'm challenging you to get on the telephone, call some friends before you complete the show, because we're having with us today the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, 14 years, and that is the Honorable P.J. Patterson. So help me to welcome Mr. Patterson. Good evening. Good evening. Your honor. Nice the honorable. It's nice to have you here, and um, I'm so excited. And I don't want to seem too nervous, but we're going to relax. Perhaps I'm more nervous than you are. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have a great time on this show today. We're going to talk about, in this particular segment, I want to ask you a few questions. And some of those questions, of course, goes way back when you were a child. What was your vision? What was your goal? Did you envision that you would rule this wonderful country of Jamaica? Talk to I us about that. I come from rural Jamaica. Okay. A district in Hanover called Dias. My grandparents were very much involved in education and the church. Okay. And at that period, there was a consciousness that the people of Jamaica had eventually to find a way of charting their own destiny. Okay. The Froom riots, as they are sometimes called, of 1938, took place about six or seven miles from where I lived. But you were a baby then? Yes, but I was okay. conscious. You were conscious at that, that time about what's just happening? Just by the movement of people uh -huh. in traffic. Okay. That something unusual was happening. Okay. Now, let me share something with you that most people don't know. Okay. When later on I became immersed in the political process as a youngster yeah. and Bustamante discovered who I was. He called me and said to me, youngster, you are masquerading under the name of Patterson, but your real name is James because Mr. William James, your grandfather, was my headmaster at school. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of stories that are told about me growing up uh, and how I became involved in the political process. What is certainly a fact is when we had universal adult suffrage and our first election in 1944. Okay. I was then aged eight. Okay. And in my school, I was running a campaign. At eight years old? At eight years old. <laughs> That's amazing. So okay. I can only say that... Um, you were predisposed. It, it was a virus yes. <laughs> which um, must have come to me, I think, more from my maternal side than even from my paternal side. Okay. I didn't, at that time, know where I was going to end up, but I knew from early, I was very conscious that I wanted to contribute in some shape or fashion to the development of Jamaica. Of Jamaica. That's wonderful. But you know, we talk about being predisposed, but really you were sent here because you came on a mission, a mission for 14 years. And what we're gonna do is in the next segment, we'll talk more about um, your being, um, working under Mar Michael Manley, you know, under his tutelage and how that developed after he re resigned and you became president. 
Well, it's not president. We're living here in the States, so I tend to say president. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. That's correct. However, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll sure. just follow up on that. Sure. Okay? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm speaking, of course, with the former Prime Minister of Jamaica, P.J. Patterson, the Honorable P.J. Patterson. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Maxine Teller Show. And of course, it is my honor to have the former Prime Minister of Jamaica with me, the Honorable P.J. Patterson. And as we continue to just talk, it's very historical and I'm very excited to have him on the show. Mr. Prime Minister, talk to us about um, Michael Manley under his tutelage and just when he resigned and you took over. Take us back to that, those times, those days. My tutelage actually began under his father. Wow. When okay. he was the premier of Jamaica in the pre-independence period. Okay. Having left University College of the West Indies, before I proceeded to do law, I was assigned as an organizer in St. Elizabeth. Okay. Where I acquired... What's an organizer? Helping okay. to get to things in To mobilize shape. the people and That's all that. Correct. Okay, okay, go ahead. And... Um, I learned a great deal, okay. not only about political organization, okay. but about the whole apparatus of government from him. Okay. And on my return from London, having been called to the bar, I became more immersed okay. in active political life. And indeed, when Michael Manley was elected, mm -hmm. the president of the party to succeed his father in 1969, okay. I was elected as a vice president of the party. Okay. And we worked together to achieve the victory in 1972. Okay. Um, I served at various times as Minister of Industry, Tourism and Foreign Trade. And in the latter portion from 1976 to 1980, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade and Tourism, and for a portion of that as Deputy Prime Minister. Wow. And then we lost the elections in 1980. Okay. We had to do a bit of rebuilding and reorganization, and we returned to office in 1989 when I took on responsibility for the portfolio of development planning and production okay. and afterwards as the Minister of Finance and Development. Okay. Michael Manley unfortunately had to retire in 1992 okay. because of a deterioration in his health okay. and the party chose me in an election to be its leader and by virtue of that I became Prime Minister from 1992 to 1993. I then went to the people in 1993 and won a term in my own right in 1993, in 1997, in 2002, and then retired in 2006 and passed the baton on. And since then I have been in retirement from active political service. All right. We're going to take a break because I need to talk to you a little bit more about the actual happenings in Jamaica before we get to your retirement because we really want to know what you're doing. You look so relaxed. You look so, you know, and you're mingling with the folks here today. You just seem like just a regular normal person. But we're going to come back and we talk more about the action your um, your terms, the 14 years that you've spent governing uh, the people in Jamaica. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Maxine Teller Show. And on my right is our former Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Honorable P.J. Patterson. And I'm very honored to have him here today. And we're going to continue our conversation. We're learning a lot more. And... Um, you're learning a lot more things. He's going to tell you things that you didn't know about in this segment, <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Prime Minister or former Prime Minister? Okay, Mr. Patterson, within this firm of being the Prime Minister of Jamaica, I know you've gone over different policies, you've had your different stages of growth in the economy, of the crime in Jamaica. Um, you've done an, a wonderful job in, in Jamaica in terms of the economy and changing policies and things in Jamaica. And Jamaica have grown in the tourism industry under your ruling. Talk to us about those times, those days. Uh, first of all, we recognize that the period of the 1990s was a decade far different from any we had ever experienced. Experience, yeah. mm -hmm. The whole world was changing politically and economically. And we had to make sure that the proper transition took place in our economic framework mm -hmm. to cope with the forces of globalization. Okay. That required our going into new areas where we have a comparative advantage. Okay. And in some cases, our dependence on traditional products had to be reduced Although, for example, in the case of sugar or bananas, mm -hmm. we had to be aware of the social implications if those areas were to collapse. Okay. We also had to emphasize in all of this the absolute priority that had to be afforded to education. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a global economy which is increasingly being driven by the power of knowledge. And therefore, we had to expand educational opportunity exponentially, mm -hmm. starting with the basic schools, right. making sure our children got off to an earlier start, right. making sure that the doors of opportunity for secondary education were opened universally. Okay. Accepting the importance of a technical input in that educational process and the advent of technology as a new feature. Okay. We also had to ensure the availability of health and um, as a consequence of what we have done, Jamaica now has one of the best uh, rates um, in terms of relatively low infant mortality Reality. and longevity of life. We felt that one of the areas which was essential for the opening of the economy was the improvement of the infrastructure. Okay. Water, okay. electricity, our airports, our transshipment ports, our roads, and we have invested a lot into that. Okay. And we had our difficulties at one time with the financial sector. Okay not unlike the difficulties which are now being experienced in the United States Ooh. with firms that have been long established and have had to make adjustments mm -hmm. with some amount of government intervention mm -hmm. to deal with their problems. Okay. So it's been a very challenging uh, period. Yeah. But we think that um, the Jamaican economy is very well positioned. You mentioned tourism. Mm -hmm. We have almost doubled our room capacity. Capacity. All right, I'm, I'm going to break you there. 
because we're out of time. But we're going to come back and pick that up, and then we're going to move into your retirement. Is that okay with sure. you, Mr. Fine. Patterson? Okay, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to complete our uh, interview with the Honorable P.J. Patterson, former Prime Minister of Jamaica. Welcome back to the final segment of the Maxine Tuller Show. Our former Prime Minister, the Honorable P.J. Patterson, is sitting with me today, talking, just casually talking, and giving some information, historical information. So stay tuned. We're going to continue our, in, in, our conversation. Certainly. Yes. Okay. Just, well, bef just yes. before we close, I was mentioning the importance of tourism. Right. And we think it's one of the ideal pillars for the Jamaican economy because we are richly blessed mm. with natural resources, beauty, beauty the mountains. I, I think uh, acre for acre, Jamaica is second to no place in the world where it comes to natural beauty. Right. But it also means that we can utilize the human skills of our people, yes. including the very important area of entertainment mm. where we have established our own peculiar mm. niche. Okay. And more recently, of course, in the field of sports. Okay, recently. Where we have <laughs> excelled um, in the Olympics, continuing the fine tradition um, set by those who have gone before. So we think Jamaica is poised for great and exciting oh, great. times. Okay. Because of our natural resource, the yam. The yam. <laughs> <laughs> we all know about that story about the yam. Now let's get into, um, I know you, you've retired 2006 and we have a new um, administration in place right now in Jamaica, but we're talking about you. What are you doing? What, oh, how are you enjoying these days of retirement without the stress the, the, and all that? My first emphasis is on my family. Okay. And I've been blessed with four grandchildren. Wow. Congratulations. So <laughs> I am able to devote some of the time to them, which my children at critical periods okay. may not have um, been able to receive because I have much more time, time at my yeah. um, disposal. I'm also trying to write my memoirs. Mm -hmm. um, it encompasses a very extensive period mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get it all together. I have also been invited by a number of uh, groupings of former presidents and prime ministers to engage in international dialogue okay. where mm -hmm. we can contribute our experience, experience. Mm -hmm. in some of the problems that confront us today. I would mention energy, I would mention climate change crime crime which mm -hmm. has now become a universal so problem, problem. Mm -hmm. issues relating to international terrorism mm -hmm. but i'm also trying to find some time for myself yeah that's what i want to know I about <laughs> love reading okay um i love music okay um not many people are aware of the fact that at one time in my life was a manager of the Scatterlights Band, the greatest. I almost say get out of here. <laughs> the greatest <laughs> aggregation yeah. of musicians that Jamaica has ever seen, okay. and they um, introduced the scattered Jamaica, from which emerged the rock steady and the, the reggae. reggae. I now have time to um, listen to that, and I also have a chance of meeting with people in very relaxed circumstances as I am doing right now on this occasion oh, yeah. um, in my visit to this part of Florida. Um, I've been here for a few weeks but I'm looking forward to getting back to the rock because there is no place like, like Jamaica mm -hmm. and as Bob Andy used to sing 
I've got to go back home. You've got to go back home. <laughs> Listen, that is wonderful. That's a good note for us to end this interview. I really, really appreciate you giving me this time to talk with you and to talk to the South Florida, Caribbean, and Jamaican community because we really wanted to get a little piece of you separate from the, the political arena that you've been in so, so many years. And um, I'm very, very happy and I'm very grateful and thankful that you were able to grant that. Thank you. And my <laughs> final word would be to all Jamaicans living in Florida, you're part of Jamaica and you can make your contribution from here oh, yes. to the building of our great okay. nation. And thank you so much, thank you. Mr. Patterson. Thank yeah. you. And thank you for watching the Maxine Teller Show. Join us again next week, same time, right here on the Maxine Teller Show. The Maxine Teller Show has been brought to you in part by the South Florida Water Management District, managing and protecting our region's water resources.